Hi, I'm Max with Family Piano. Um, I've been a teacher here at Family Piano um, since October, and I've been teaching for about three years now. Um, I teach piano, music theory. Um, I focus a lot on classical music and on written music, but I also do some pop music, some jazz, um, and some ragtime. And today I am here to talk about the music of Bach. So Bach is a really interesting composer. Um, one of the really cool things about him, um, so he wrote his music in the early 1700s for the most part, at a time before the modern piano was born. So he actually didn't write for the piano. Um, what I just played on was a harpsichord. Um, I'm playing it on our lovely Kawai CA99. This is actually one of the newest digital pianos out on the market right now has a whole host of different sounds, really nicely rendered. Um, and I want to kind of go into the question of instrument in Bach. So Bach actually wrote his music not for piano and not for harpsichord for the most part. He, he was a really interesting composer in that his music, he wrote in a way that it could be played on a lot of different instruments. and. Um, this is partita number six, which is a, a keyboard suite. So a lot of the time, whether it's well-tempered clavier um, or his partita suites or Art of the Fugue, as I'm going to show you, he wrote not just for any instrument in particular, but really he would write for keyboard. Um, and at the time, during his time, there were several different keyboard instruments. There was the harpsichord. <laughs> It has a really unique sound, um, really rustic. Um, and then the other really big one would be the organ, the church organ. Um, really common in Bach's day. This is probably what he's really known for is his, uh, is his organ playing when he actually was alive. And then today, what he's, his music is most popularly actually played on a piano. Now, a lot of people consider piano to be like the dream instrument for Bach because it could do kind of a good blend of what the harpsichord and the organ can do. But to kind of go into that, um, so starting off this piece, um, so this is a toccata, at least at the beginning, um, which features a lot of really agile motion. That tends to come off really well on a harpsichord. Um, the harpsichord, if you could think about it in terms of like what each instrument really highlights in terms of box music, a harpsichord is really good for motion and highlighting moving lines. Um, it's because it has a nice sharp attack. So it has a really nice sharp attack, so it really highlights quick moving notes. And the harpsichord is also really good for articulation which in Bach's music, so there's a lot Bach didn't write into his music, including articulation, like these little trills. Those are really highlighted by the harpsichord. Um, so he also didn't add tempo markings and he didn't add dynamics, which is really interesting. So the harpsichord actually can't do dynamics. It's just at one constant uh, dynamic, and that's because of the way that it's played with um, the strings getting plucked, and it's all the same mechanism. Um, so for the most part, it, it has a very limited dynamic range. Um, and the same with organ, unless you're going and changing the different um, stops and everything, you're kind of stuck with one sound, um, at least one volume level um, throughout the whole piece. Um, unless you're changing the stops, which in box time you wouldn't really be changing stops in between the pieces. Um, so with box music, you're going to find the organ is really good for when there's, you know, sort of two independent melodies going on at the same time or three independent melodies going on at the same time. Let's look at the same example. That's one of your melody lines. Then down here you have... is it's going to highlight both of those lines at the same time. 
um, which can really help come to live uh, Bach's music. <laughs> the piano, you get to do kind of a combination of both. Um, so one of the really great things about the piano for Bach, now Bach never got to write for the piano even. It, it was rumored that he got to see an early version of the piano um, and he liked what he saw, but he didn't really you know, have any idea where the piano was going to go. But today, of course, it's one of the most, you know, it's one of the most nuanced instruments out there and it's there's so much that you could do with it that you can't do with the harpsichord and the organ um, and i'm just going to play kind of the opening here to show one of the best things that you could do is you now have control over dynamics um, and you have a lot more control over little nuancey touches so you could put a lot of interpretation with the piano See, I can control the dynamics and make the top note louder. So there's a lot of advantages to either harpsichord, organ, or piano. Um, but when you start getting into his contrapuntal music is really when it begins to become more apparent the different advantages and disadvantages of the music. For example, we're going to look at Art of the Fugue, which is a really great collection of Bach's music. He wrote it right at the end of his life. Um, all of the pieces in here are based off of one really simple D minor melody, um, and it's a fugue, so the same simple melody is going to keep coming back in each, in each hand, in four different voices, um, and it's really essential to highlight that melody as it keeps coming out in the different voices, and the different instruments that we have to do that can each do a different job at that. So, for example, one of the things that changes a lot um, is if you're going to play with an organ versus a piano, it's going to really drastically change your interpretation of the piece. For example, this is his very first uh, contrapunctus from Art of the Few, and um, when you play it with organ, you're going to tend to play it quicker, um, mostly because there's not as much nuance that you could bring to the melody. Um, but you can highlight it in a really great way, and it's really good for grandiose playing. Um, so here is a little bit of Fox Counterpunctus 1 of the Art of Beat on organ. really great because unlike a lot of other instruments it sustains that the same volume throughout the entire note um, so it really highlight highlights um, long notes and it also highlights notes that are you know at the outer extremes of the piano um, for example when 
when I'm going up high, um, like over here. notes in the middle are a little bit more diminished um, because there's a lot going on on the outside and that's where a lot of the volume is. Um, things can get kind of mixed up in the middle, especially the quicker the notes are moving. Um, but that's one thing that with harpsichord, for example, you're not going to find as big of an issue with that because it really highlights motion really well. does not sustain well. So that's going to lead you to either increase the tempo, so um, it at least sustains the amount of length that you need it to, um, or it's going to lead to you know, just a whole different interpretation. So if we look ahead, another really good thing um, about the piano over the organ or the harpsichord is it does a really good job of distinguishing um, and creating nuance in the different registers of the piano. You can hear the difference between notes down here, and notes over here, and notes up here. They have a very different character. Um, but when you're playing with organ, for example, when you have moving stuff going on in the bass line, um, it could get kind of muddy. So to give an example of that, here's Contrapunctus two. still highlight the main voice as it keeps, keeps coming in. harpsichord um, and because the harpsichord also has a much more rustic kind of crisp sound to it you also lose that full tone um, in the recurring uh, subject lines everything is an equal volume with the harpsichord, um, it, things can tend to mesh a little bit um, more, um, especially because there's not as big of a color contrast between notes up here and notes down here. So 
to kind of review with Bach, one of the really great things is he didn't write for any specific instrument you know, in particular. We tend to play a lot of his stuff on the piano because it's a really good compromise um, and actually a big upgrade on the harpsichord in a lot of ways. Still, the harpsichord gives you that really rustic, genuine sound um, that would come a lot closer to um, what people would be playing on back then. Um, and with the organ, it really brings a really grandiose view of the music. It really highlights um, independent lines really well. Um, so there are advantages and disadvantages to each. Um, but one also really good thing with Bach um, is today his music is not just played, his keyboard music is not just played on keyboard instruments, it's really commonly being played in string quartets, um, saxophone quartets, people really like to take synths also and make his music um, with synthesizers, um, which because he didn't write for any instrument in particular, he didn't include dynamics, he didn't include tempo, you have a lot of freedom. And because he wrote in a style where oftentimes you have a lot of independent melodies going on at once, um, it really can work for a large combination of different instruments. So this would be um, on modern electric piano, um, Box Contrapunctus 3. on so many different instruments. It gives you a lot of freedom to get to try out your own interpretation. If you have a digital piano at home, you have a lot of fun playing around with the different voices and which with each different voice, you're actually gonna uncover something new with the music. So in that way, Bach is really different than a lot of other composers. Um, for example, Mozart's music, Beethoven's music, any of the other classical composers, they wrote sonatas for piano, and if their music was for piano, um, it was written for piano, and it was taking advantage of some of the best things of the piano. Therefore, let's say you try to take a harpsichord and start playing Beethoven's Moonlight Sonata, for example. It, it's not gonna cut it, um, because harpsichord and the piano are very different instruments, and the piano, for example, has just a much fuller tone, especially in that bass. And then, of course, the style itself is different. Um, Beethoven, Bach, and all the other composers, they didn't write mostly for independent melody lines. Um, otherwise, you would, this is, this is a chord, by the way. This is a chord. It was much more chord-based music, where this is independent line-based music, making it really great for a bunch of different instruments. Um, so if you would like to learn some more about Bach, Mozart, Beethoven, or even if you want to learn some jazz, some ragtime, um, pop music, want to learn some music theory, um, I'd love to help you out. Just uh, go on to familypiano.com slash music lessons and you can get started. All right, thank you very much.